when um, when they design something like Mario Brothers, do you think they just sit down a couple of nerds and just start typing? Yes. No. Oh, yeah. no. They probably spend up to a month just figuring out what the game's going to look like before they even start the coding process. Okay, and then they send off, you know, they got guys doing the pictures, and they got guys doing this, and they got guys doing that. And when I say guys, I mean males and females, of course, right? They don't just start coding, and yet that's exactly what you guys do. Okay? If you plan it out, it will go a lot smoother. So, there is a need to plan, and there's this idea of pseudocode. Okay, and pseudocode is simply not really code, just sort of made up code, your own language, right? That makes sense to you. Not, you don't have to worry about semicolons or anything like that, okay? You have to consider all possibilities. Like, for example, if you give them a maximum of 10 balls to catch and the guy puts in 100, you have to handle that. I remember years and years ago playing a golf game where I tried to break it by, I would hit the ball purposely, I would aim as far left as I could, and I would let end way up on the left side of the rough. And then I ended up aiming left again and going as far left as I could. I wanted to see how far they had programmed me left. And eventually it came to a wall and it just bounced off there and it came back, right? So they, someone realized, oh, there's gonna be some idiot out there aiming left just to see how far he can go. That was me that day. Yes. I wanted to see how far left I could go. Okay, now this is big here. This is a big idea. Think big and then work down to details. You have some vision in your mind what you want your game to look like, right? And then you break it into chunks and then you work down to the details. Okay? And then once you've got the details planned out, then you code the opposite way. You code from the details and you work up. Okay? So you go down to the detail level, from the big idea level, and then you code up until you get done. Kind of thing. Okay. So I would like you to think about designing a simple guessing game. We're going to start really, really, really simple. So a player gets 10 chances. A random number is selected between 1 and 20. The player gets a chance to guess whether the next number is higher or lower. Then the second number is selected and the number of wins or losses is recorded. And after 10 rounds, the results are shown. So. You're just going to listen. Okay, here's how the game works. I've got it all set up here. Okay, so you get 10 chances. Oh, that's not good. This is strictly a text based game, there's no graphics here or whatever. Okay, Quinn, close that computer. Here's my game. Round number one, the number is nine. Is the next one going to be higher or lower? Lower. Lower? lower. I feel it. It's like being on the price is right. Lower, lower. Oh, 17, we lose. What? <laughs> I said lower, and the next number was 17. Higher. You can't, higher? It's lower, it's lower. It's lower. lower is the better answer because it's 11, right? Next number is 15, we lose. Why? I was right again. Uh, 1 in 20. This one's higher, I know it's higher. I'm going with lower, I'm going to pay the odds. Higher. Oh, how come? I went lower? Well, what's going on here? Oh, I got a bug in my program. That's no good. Okay? But that's basically how the game goes. Okay? It's not a particularly lot of fun, is it? Okay? But the concept is we're not worried about making a game, we're worried about uh, designing the game. So basically, this isn't really necessarily pseudocode, this is just sort of a description, right? I get 10 chances, a random number is selected, I get it to guess whether it's higher or lower, then the second number is selected, and then I'm recording after 10 rounds. Okay, so that's the game. Here's my pseudocode. Here's my pseudocode. I'm going to set up a 10 guess loop. I'm going to get a random number, RND num. I'm going to get a random number. I'm going to display it. Then I'm going to get a guess, whether it's higher or lower. I'm going to get the second random number. Remember, pseudocode is like code for me to understand. It's planning code. It can be RND and then RAND if I want. 
display it, then if the if the number is higher and my guess was higher, then I win. If my number if I, if the number was lower and I guess lower, then I also win. And if it's anything else, then I lose. And then I do my next round and then I display my results. There's my pseudocode, my plan for the code. And what I have to do is I have to now convert this into actual Liberty Basic code. Okay, I've got my plan. And now once I've done the thinking part, the coding part is just like translating it from one language to another. Okay, this is the hard part. It's how you're going to do it. Right? And then you do the coding part. Separate the coding from the planning and things are so much smoother. Okay? Once you start to do it, what generally happens is the kids in grade 10 completely ignore what they have to say and do it their way. Around grade 11, they sort of try and do a little bit. And then once they get to grade 12, then they go, okay, yeah, it was a whole lot easier that way. I wish I'd done it that way right from the start. That's usually how it goes. Don't be one of those people who do it from the start. Okay. Now I'm going to expand that idea to play a game called in between. Okay, here's the game in between. Uh, where is it? Okay, yeah, press tab. I'm going to I'm going to show you how that indentation stuff works. It's it's very very good. You'll figure it out. Okay, here's how we play. Okay, what's my bankroll? I'm going to start with a hundred dollars. Okay, there's the instructions. Here's how it goes. I'll have two cards dealt. I have to make a bet as to whether the third card is going to be in between those two. Okay, I can bet anywhere from zero dollars to my current bankroll. If the third card is in between the first two, then I win the amount bet. If the third card is outside, either bigger than or less than, I lose. If the third card matches one of the first two cards, I lose. And if the first two cards are the same, then I don't play in between, I play higher or lower. So I take the game that I just designed, it's a small part, of this one. And if all three cards match, you lose triple your bet. Okay? And each game costs 1% of your initial bankroll to play because I put in $100 to start with. Every game costs me a dollar. Okay, so I've got two sixes, which means what? I can't play in between. I have to play the higher or lower version, which I've already coded. What happens if you pick a six? It's the same. If you match all three, then you lose triple your bet. But if you say you want to draw another six. Uh, you can't draw another six. You just say whether it's higher or lower. So I'm going to say higher because it's a six. Say, I'm going to say higher. I did press two. No. Maybe it's a one. I now have to bet that my next card is higher. Let's bet ten bucks. My third card is a 10, so I win. I had $99, I win 10, I'm up to 109. Play again. I got two sixes again. I probably have it set up that way so that it automatically does it. Okay? But that's how that game works. Okay? So, how would you design that game? Here's the, here's the instructions. No, no, no. We're going to actually, this is the game we're going to build together. As I teach you something, you're going to take that something and you're going to put it into that project. Okay, so every lesson there's going to be a project part, which means take your project and throw it in there. Okay, so two cards are dealt to you. You have to make a bet as to whether the third card is in between those two. You can bet anywhere from zero to your current bankroll. If the third card is in between the first two, you win the amount of bet. The third card is outside the first two, you lose your bet. If the third card matches one of the first two cards, you lose double. And if the first two cards are the same, you must decide if the third is higher or lower. Okay? And there's an ante, a 1% ante as well. Yes. You just quit when you want to, right? There's no winning. Now that's a good question too. When when you design a game, you have to know what the 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 final sequences, like what's the winning, how you know when to quit, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Got to think about all these things. Okay. So here is the pseudocode, and it's not that bad. Okay, I'm giving it to you. So first thing to do, print the instructions. Next thing to do, get the bankroll. By doing this, like when you're doing the coding, you can just say, okay, yeah, I've done that part. Okay, done that part, right? You can sort. It gives you a checklist of what you need to do, and then the coding is just very simple. Determine the ante and print it. Determine if we're going to play. 
That's a loop. Now, see what I've done here? What does this sort of mean, this indentation, do you think? This is means a loop. This is the loop here. And it's very similar to Scratch because Scratch made those sort of brackets, right? So we're determined if we're going to play or not. I subtract my ante and print my new bankroll. I pick my cards and print. I determine if which one is the bigger, which one is the smaller, or if they match. I determine which game we're playing, whether we're playing in between or whether we're playing higher and lower. And then depending on that, I either play in between or I play higher or lower. Keeping in mind that we've already made code for higher and lower. And then I ask to play again and check to see if the bankroll is zero. Okay? Basically, what you're talking about here is you're making your plan, you're figuring stuff out, and then you go to the coding part, which I believe is what is next. Now, you can also, pseudocode allows you to sort of do that step down stuff, right? Like I said here, play in between, play higher or lower. These two different chunks can be broken down even more. Okay? Here's the in-between game pseudocode. Here's the high-low game pseudocode. This is called stepwise refinement. Okay? We are going from big steps to smaller and smaller and smaller steps. And then we code from the small steps and we work our way up. And Jason needs to go. Okay, so the in-between game, there's the pseudocode. It's get bet, check to see if it's greater than the bankroll. Pick the third card and print it. If it's in between, we print a win and add the bet to bankroll. If it's outside, we say we lose. And if it's a match, we say we print lose as well. And there's the pseudocode for the high-low game. Okay? So do you see what I've done? I've taken a very top-level pseudocode, and I've broken it into chunks, and then I've written pseudocode for them. If you're thinking about Mario Brothers, let's talk about Mario Kart. Who has played Mario Kart? Which I can Mario? say Mario Kart, it doesn't matter which one, because I have played Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Okay. What are the different sort of big things that have to happen? A banana. No, that's a detail. Bananas. The car? You gotta pick the car. The you gotta pick the character. You gotta the pick the track. The the right? The automatic. You get all those things, right? So think about picking the car. Mm -hmm. Then there's details in that. Is it a standard or is it not a Mac, right? There's also difficulty. There's difficulty levels. So they take that big picture and they break it into chunks and then they go and they say, Corey, go work on the pick a car part. Quinn, go work on the pick a character part. Make sure these two guys speak to each other, right? And that they are working with the same variable. And that's how they do games. It's not one guy just doing it all. Okay? They do this. They break things into chunks. You need to learn how to do it. Okay. Here's the steps. Okay? So, this is our programming plan. I'm going to print the instructions. I'm going to get my bankroll and calculate my ante. I'm going to set up a loop to play. The bankroll has to be bigger than zero. I'm going to use a while loop for that and so on and so on and so on. When you do big projects like this, you save as you go. And you save as version 1, and then version 2, and then version 3, and then version 4, and then version 5, and so on. Why do you do that? So if you screw up. If you screw up version 6, you can always go back to version 5. Never, ever, ever just have one version of the code. Always have yesterday's code in case. Okay? Always have yesterday's code in case. Okay? Now we can play, we can take in between, we could go right to grade 12 with this if we want. Okay? Right now it's text based. We could convert it into window based. We could use an actual deck of cards, right? Like in my game, it's just 1 to 20, right? We could use an actual ace and a king where there's only four kings. And once you've played a king, there's only three kings left. And we can have pictures of cards and we can have all sorts of things, okay? We can do sound. All of that we can do. But you got to start small. If you start with this, if you start with this, that's the basic structure of the game, right? And then you build on layers and layers and layers and layers. Okay? All right. So here is your assignment for the day. Okay? Here's your assignment for the day. I want you to start a program, call it in between. I want, hang on, I want you to have the program print out the instructions, and I'll put them back up on the screen here for you. Basically, you're copying. 
I want you to use an input to get the player's bankroll and determine the ante. And it's 1% of the bankroll. Save that as in between version 1. Okay? That is your job for today. Hang on, Quinn. If you haven't got the payroll assignment from yesterday done, you need to work on it as well. Okay? That's what you need to do for in between. Okay? I will, uh, I will print out the instructions given to you because I probably don't haven't given them to you. Or you know what I'll do is I'll post them on headline and then you can just copy and paste. That'll be better. Let's do that.